untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a black-white artifact aggro deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and the deck has received a ton of new additions since the last time we've looked at a Tempered Steel deck but Tempered Steel remains one of the most important cards in the deck. A 3-man enchantment saying artifact creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2 so a very powerful anthem effect that will turn any of our artifact creatures into a real threat. And then uh, taking a look at the rest of the deck, starting out at the zero mana, we have the full playset of Ornithopter, definitely a synergy card that can benefit from our various anthem effects, like Tempered Steel, Chief of the Foundry, and Steel Overseer, and that also wears an all that glitters nicely and pumps it up by one more. Then at one mana, we've got a new addition from the latest anthology with Court Homunculus, a one mana 1-1 one -one that gets plus one plus one as long as we control another artifact, so essentially a one mana 2-2 two -two in this deck, which is not too bad. Then we also have Toolcraft Exemplar from Kaladesh Remastered, a 1-1 Dwarf Artificer, the only non-artifact creature in the deck, but it more than makes up for it, because at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control an artifact, the Exemplar gets plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn, and if we control 3 or more artifacts, it also gains first strike until end of turn, so it tanks as a 3-2 creature, can also potentially help Crew or Heart of Kiran all by itself, so very powerful 1-drop in the deck. Then we also have two copies of Ginger Brute as a 1-1 one -one with haste that can potentially become unblockable except by creatures with haste, so it gives us a bit of additional evasion. And then the full place at a Vault Scourge from the latest anthology, which I moved over to the 1-drops, because we can cast Vault Scourge for just one mana if we're willing to pay the two life from the Phyrexian mana cost, otherwise we can play it for one and a black in later turns. And then a 1-1 one -one artifact creature with a flying and lifelink, so wears an all that glitters nicely and great with our various anthem effects as well, making it very difficult for the opponent to race. Then at 2 mana, another very important creature is Steel Overseer, a 1-1 one -one artifact creature construct that can tap to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each artifact creature we control. So if we get to untap with our Steel Overseer, good things will happen and we can quickly run away with the game. Then we also have two copies of Heart of Kiran, the legendary vehicle that's a 4-4 flyer with Vigilance with crew 3, so we need to tap a total of 3 or more power among creatures we control in order to turn Heart of Kiran into a creature. Can also remove a loyalty of Planeswalkers, although no Planeswalkers in the main deck could potentially consider something like a Karn Sign of Urza as a potential sideboard option against more controlling decks which would make this interaction more relevant but just a nice evasive creature that helps us dodge sweeper effects so great against control. Then we also have the full playset of Scrap Heap Scrounger as a 3-2 artifact creature construct that cannot block and for one on a black we can exile another creature card from our graveyard to return Scrap Heap from our graveyard to the battlefield so a nice recursive threat and makes it very difficult for control decks to get rid of it. And then we have the full playset of All That Glitters, definitely an all-in card since it potentially opens us up to a 2-for-1 if the opponent has removal available, but it does help us close games quickly, so it's an important tool to have against the faster combo decks in the format. And then at 3 mana, the full playset of Tempered Steel, as well as two copies of Chief of the Foundry from Kaladesh Remastered, giving other artifact creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, so another nice anthem effect for the deck. And then last but certainly not least, going over the mana base, we have the full playset of Blink Moth Nexus, which might be one of the best creature lands available in Historic, since for one mana we can turn it into a 1-1 Blink Moth artifact creature with flying, that's still a land, and for one mana we can also tap it to give target Blink Moth creature plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, so we can potentially pump up another Blink Moth Nexus. So this being an artifact creature means it also gets all the benefits from cards like Chief of the Foundry and Tempered Steel, and can even keep a plus 1 counter from Steel over here, since plus one counters don't get removed from our lands, unlike enchantment auras, so usually don't want to put an alt-head glitters on our blink moth. And then the rest of the mana base includes some black-white dual lands to potentially get back our scrap heap or cast our vault scourge without paying two life. So we've got four godless shrine, four concealed courtyard, and four of the black-white pathway, and then six basic planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn 1 Ginger Brutes, no real reason to run out Ornithopter just yet since we're probably going to play the Scrap Heap instead of any all that glitters we might draw. Opponent casts Abundant Harvest finding Spell Pierce, so that could counter Tempered Steel. For now we'll play a Scrap Heap, 
into Ornithopter, since next turn we might cast Tempered Steel to pump the Ornithopter. If our opponent keeps up Spell Pierce, we just play Exemplar. So I'm not sure what type of deck our opponent is playing. See another Abundant Harvest, finds Sprite Dragon, so maybe a Teamer Phoenix deck. Opponent does keep up one mana, and there's an Altar Glitters. So going for Altar Glitters gets countered by Spell Pierce and also gets punished by a Shock. So we don't have any great play here, but we can play Exemplar. Might as well attack first. Although I guess if we play Exemplar and the opponent responds in some way, we could still play the All That Glitters. But I doubt that would happen here. Alright, we'll pass. And there's a shock, so that would have punished our All That Glitters quite badly. Luckily, we do still have all the artifact creatures in place, so Tempered Steel could resolve and be great here. If our opponent plays Pride Dragon keeps up Spell Pierce, we could still draw land to resolve the Glitters. Instead, it's going to be a Dragon's Guard Elite. Ah, land isn't bad. They might have another Shock, but so be it. And then I think I put this on either Ornithopter or Ginger Brute. Question is which one. Ginger Brute long term might be better, although Sprite Dragon has haste, so it can still block it. So let's go on Ornithopter that way if they do have removal. It's a little less bank breaking. Right, opponent casts a spell pierce just to get it out of their hands, we'll pay. So now we can't activate the Ginger Brute. But we can still hit for seven. Alright. Let's see if they can stabilize from here. Another Abundant Harvest. A nice cantrip to pump the Elite, finds a land. Breeding Pool gonna cost them two life. And now the coast might be clear for Tempered Steel. It's gonna be a Terramander with five instants or sorceries in the graveyard. So they still can't quite Pump this up, Steel Overseer to draw. Well, I think we go for Tempered Steel here. If it does get Spell Pierced, we can still attack with Ornithopter and Unblockable Ginger Brute, which would force them to chump. So that seems like a reasonable outcome. Decisive Denial instead to counter it. So our opponent loses Terramander before they could pump it up. Spry Dragon into a fourth and final Abundant Harvest. Finds an Opt. Alright, the Dragon's Guard Elite's pretty big now too. But still not really in a position where they can attack. And Sprite Dragon can block Ginger Brute, but now the turret 1, it's going to be forced to jump Ornithopter, and we can play double Overseer too. So, I guess if we activate Ginger Brute, we won't be able to play Overseer unless we attack with everyone, which might be fine too. Yeah, we'll uh, attack with the team. Could have played Overseer first to pump the Ornithopter, but. Doesn't really change anything since our opponent's still forced to chump. And at 3 life I don't really see them coming back, unless they've got some double strike trample shenanigans up their sleeve. And our opponent concedes, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice opening hand. It's missing a 1-drop, but 
If Overseer survives, we could do a lot of damage. And then we do need a second white source eventually for Tempered Steel. I'll run out Ornithopter for now. Turn one island. I think we play Chief before Tempered Steel. That way it also gets the benefit from Overseer. Let's see if this gets countered. Right, SS Capture counters it, although no creature to receive the counter. And Overseer puts a counter on Ornithopter. Lots of counters. Tempest Gin. Alright, that's a blast from the past. And yeah, we get to play Chief plus Exemplar. Seems pretty good. And next turn we either start animating Blink Moth or play Tempered Steel, we'll see. Mono Blue typically doesn't have a ton of removal for cards like Steel Overseer, so that's just gonna add more power toughness over time, making it pretty difficult for the opponent. And then activating Blink Moth also helps us play around any potential counter spells. Alright, might still try and resolve the Tempered Steel here. Play this first in case of Quench. All right, surprisingly resolved. They might have a bounce spell for the Tempered Steel, so still want to be a little careful. So let's say they bounce this, then they could eat a Blink Moth. So I'm probably going to tap Blink Moth to animate the other one and just put counters on them. And then for now, only attack with Chief and Ornithopter, which are safe from the Tempest Gin, even if they remove my Tempered Steel. Alright, Cutthroats. That's fine. And a Brazen Borrower bounces Tempered Steel. Yep. So we'll animate the other Blink Moth. And next turn, we can pretty much make the same play. Curiosity on the Cutthroat, sure. I think we can safely take it and then just kill them on the swing back. Alright, so... Could run out Tempered Steel, feels like that's just bad if they have more counter spells. So let's just double animate. Probably still better off tapping the Overseer as opposed to attacking with it. This is already lethal. Right, borrower to bound chief. Alright, we'll still activate Overseer here. Alright, opponent attacks. They get to draw one more card, but it's probably their last one. And our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. I 
All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one Volt Scourge, turn two Overseer, double all that glitters, and another Overseer. Okay. So we wouldn't mind drawing another one mana artifact creature we can play alongside Overseer on turn three. Red White, Marauding Raptor. This might be some sort of Caprador deck. We'll see. For now, play Blink Moth, I think, into Overseer. If this is a Caprador deck, opponent could be running cards like Deafening Clarion and Storm's Wrath. Fable Passage fetches a tap land. Might see Brash Taunter in our future too. And a stomp. I'm gonna take care of Overseer. Alright, there's our one drop we asked for. And then next turn we can maybe deploy our first all that glitters. Go for blood, let's the raptor fight our overseer. So yeah, go for blood definitely points towards a potential Caprador Brash Taunter deck. We could trade, don't think I want to. Ooh, a tempered steel? Yeah, that seems better than anything else. Put on cycles another fight spell here. And we'll attack. Get to gain three life. And next turn maybe put an altered glitters on the Volt Scourge. Opponent attacks. Is this his second main Storm's Wrath maybe? Nope, opponent passes. Alright, so opponent's got a bunch of mana up. Don't know if I need to play around a Settled or Wreckage. These gimmicky decks tend to have all sorts of crazy cards. I don't feel comfortable playing the Altered Glitters out. I guess Settle animating Blink Moth and attacking would be a little all-in. Yeah, I mean, we'll start by playing a Scrounger here, see if there's a response. Maybe put the Altered Glitters on the Homunculus and attack. Okay, so they have a 3 damage removal spell, like Lightning Helix. Alright, Gideon's Sacrifice, so... Opponent sacrifices their Raptor. That's fine. So that's the card I usually want to combine with a Brash Taunter. Next turn we can just double activate Blink Moth. Or we could play another Glitters, depending on what our opponent does here. Runs out Bone Crusher. Alright, Chief isn't bad, but our opponent packs it in. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. As you can see, we're playing on the new and improved Amoncad Battlefield. Lead with a Toolcraft Exemplar. Don't think we're gonna need Ornithopter to be in play just yet. Alright, opponent on a colorless ramp deck. So we just wanna apply as much pressure as possible. And yeah, we've got a pretty good hand to do so. With Tempered Steel adding essentially 6 Baron Toughness next turn. Another Guardian Idol, into another Guardian Idol. Who, who, another Tempered Steel? Yeah, this is gonna be backbreaking. Opponents at 7. Although they do have a Blast Zone now on 1. Destroys Exemplar and Homunculus. Luckily, Volt Scourge has a convert mana cost of 2. 
So, on the board our opponent's alive, but as soon as we play second Tempered Steel, they will be dead to our flyers. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Facing a turn one looting. We've got a decent curve. Would love to top deck Tempered Steel as always. All the glitters could be strong too. But we don't have any gaps in our curve for the first couple turns at least. So just looking for those powerful curve toppers. Alright, opponent discards Arc Light and Sprite Dragon. We drew Toolcraft, which might be better than turn one Homunculus, even though it doesn't get pumped by Chief. And then don't really see a reason to Ornithopter yet. I guess never mind, our opponent could have a Sprite Dragon. Which we could potentially soak up with Ornithopter. Opponent passes. Yeah, we'll play a scrap heap, and then now I want to play Ornithopter so we have an extra artifact to pump Exemplar. First strike, not really going to be necessary. But at this point, I might as well play double Ornithopter since we're uh, playing the Chief next turn anyway, so. Opponent falls to 17. So this turn they could already bring back Arclight Phoenix. Kick things off with a Brainstorm. So let's say our opponent brings back Phoenix. Next turn we play Chief. Then um, they could still trade for Scrap Heap. Or they could eat an Ornithopter. It's going to be a Stormwing Entity instead. Okay. I think we're fine losing an Ornithopter to get in additional damage here. Especially after drawing another one. Alright. Hopefully no removal on Chief. Most removal in a Phoenix deck only deals 2 damage. So Chief is safe from a Shock or a Pillar of Flame. Although we could see Prismari Command, potentially. And most likely see the Arclight Phoenix come back from the graveyard too. So yeah, the game's definitely not over. Probably need to draw another strong Anthem effect. Finale of Promise on opt and looting, so could put additional copies of Arclight in the graveyard. Now you don't often see the Phoenix deck on the back foot, don't know if the entity is going to be able to attack here. Just to one Phoenix, opponent stays back, passes. So if we animate Blink Moth and attack with the team, how are they blocking? It's going to be a two powered creature, three, four, five, six. So they could put Stormwing on Chief, Phoenix on Scrap Heap, and then take five, six, seven, so they wouldn't be dead. So Chief doesn't get to attack. I think that leaves us just attacking with Scrap Heap and Toolcraft, and then they probably trade Phoenix for Scrounger, but we can get it back end of turn. Right, opponent jumps with Entity, Toolcraft does have First Strike. Alright, let's see what they come up with. Expressive Iteration, so the Phoenix most likely coming back. But next turn we might be able to attack with everyone. Yeah, Phoenix can be pretty strong against creature decks like these. 
if they can block with it and keep bringing it back. So that's sometimes why you want to wait until you can set up a very large attack instead of making trades. Lightning Axe on Homunculus, so they must have another answer for Chief. Shock on Toolcraft, okay. Don't quite get why they didn't kill the Chief instead. But they do bring back double Arclight Phoenix. So yeah. Get to untap. And I don't think we're in a position to make any attacks, unfortunately. I guess Scrap Heap could attack since there's no shortage of creatures to exile. But that's about it. And now their opponent is down to two cards in hand, they might struggle to bring back the Arclight Phoenix. Another planes, not ideal. So what happens if I animate Blink Moth attack with everyone? If they have removal at instant speed for Chief, it's a disaster. So probably still just attack with a scrap heap. Another iteration, so that's probably going to get back double Phoenix. And we're not making a ton of progress. Pillar of Flame luckily can't exile the Chief by itself, but double Pillar can. Pillar also good answer to Scrap Heap Scrounger. Yeah, so double Phoenix comes back. Yeah, if we don't draw a Tempered Steel, I don't see us winning this game. Maybe a Steel Overseer that goes unanswered for a few turns. Another Scrap Heap. I guess all attacks still. Hardcast Arclight Phoenix. So we're in that stage of the game now. And our opponent feels comfortable attacking too. Come on, Tempered Steel. Opponent's empty handed. Alright, Steel Overseer could be good too. Now I don't really want to trade for Phoenix. So we'll pass and hope they don't find removal. Stormwing can find it next turn, but we get one Overseer activation at least. Opponent goes bottom bottom, okay, so we have a chance. And our opponent's attacking now, we'll take it. So they are taking some risks to try and close out the game since they know the Overseer is going to take over otherwise. So I can animate Blink Moth. Yeah, I think we just attack with Scrap Heap here. And then I don't need to pump with Overseer just yet. Opponent takes it. Then we'll pump with Overseer. And then I can still activate my Blink Moth on defense if necessary. Probably wanted to play the Courtyard there. Ooh, an Ox. That's a nice one to refuel. All right, do they have removal for Overseer? Brainstorm is probably going to find it. And a Sprite Dragon, one card left. And sadly, Pillar of Flame on the Overseer, yep.
even exiles it so we don't get to bring back Scrap Heap. Our opponent attacks with a team so we can block the Sprite Dragon with Ornithopter. And then we still need to block Stormwing Entity to survive. But that's also going to put a creature in graveyard for Scrap Heap Scrounger. So that might actually give us a lethal on the way back since the Ox will block Scrap Heap and then we should have just enough to get across the finish line. Animate Blink Moth. Alright, that was a close game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. In this case, there's no real reason to run out Ornithopter on turn 1. If the opponent maybe plays a random discard effect, we can discard Ornithopter instead. Sometimes if you have, let's say, a Court Homunculus, you want to play it so it does get to plus 1 plus 1 bonus, so it doesn't die to 1 damage effect. Sometimes you want to put a turn 2 Alt Head Glitters on your Ornithopter, or maybe you're playing against a deck where the Ornithopter can block a 1-powered creature. So there are definitely reasons to run it out on turn 1. Now that we drew the Overseer, definitely want to play the Ornithopter so next turn it can attack after getting a plus 1 counter. And we get to hit for 3 with our Toolcraft, next turn even gets first strike. As our opponent sacrifices a Fabled Passage to get a Plains. So yeah, next turn Chief pumping the team could be quite powerful. Lightning Helix takes out Toolcraft Exemplar. Not the creature I would have targeted, but we'll see what happens here. Maybe they have another answer for Steel Overseer. Or they have a Sweeper, they just wanted to prevent damage early on. Alright, second Lightning Helix for Steel Overseer this time. At least our Chief now has 4 Toughness, so save from another Helix. And uh, yeah, we can shock ourselves so we can play Scrap Heap and still attack with a 2-2 Blink Moth. Serpent had double Helix, gain 6 life, kill 2 of our creatures, but we're still in reasonable shape. And yeah, opponent packs it in, they're just too far behind on board. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn 1, I think I like Volt Scourge over Brutes. Turn 2, could go for Heart of Kiron, which we can then crew with our Scrounger. And Stitcher Supplier can be an annoying blocker, but luckily we've got a lot of evasive threats this time. And I'll play Ornithopter since we might end up suiting it up with an Alt Head Glitters. Our opponent is black-red, hopefully they don't have Colligan's Command in their deck. And what do we discard here? So this is a situation where if we held the Ornithopter we might have ended up discarding it. I think we just discard Brutes and then next turn Scrounger can crew hearts. Yeah, that's fine. And if they make us discard all that glitter, so be it. They most likely have removal for the creature we enchant anyway. And then we can start animating Blink Moth as well. Young Pyromancer, okay. Can be pretty effective if we have a lot of ground creatures, but again, we draw our flyers. Probably still worth it to attack with a Scrounger on the ground as opposed to saving it for all that glitters. Doesn't seem like our opponent has shock at instant speed here. They might jump with a supplier. Nope, opponent trades for Pyromancer, that's fine.
opponent claims Croxa to make his discard glitters. And is this a village right in response? It is. Okay. So Tempered Steel, probably our best top deck now. And Redheart Arcanists. A little bit late to the party, but could still do something next turn. So I can animate Blink Moth, play Volt Scourge, or we could bring back Scrounger so the one in play can attack instead of having to crew. Um, I think I just want to get in as much evasive damage as possible. So, yeah, play Volt Scourge. So this game we got punished a little bit for running out Ornithopter instead of keeping it in hand to potentially discard. But we're still in decent shape. It's gonna be Reckless Rage, killing our Scrap Heap and finishing off Stitcher Supplier. Second Arcanist. But yeah, we can just uh, bring back Scrounger to Crew Hearts. Another Reckless Rage. Can kill a Volt Scourge. Sure. So, yeah, we'll bring back Scrap Heap. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn one exemplar, turn two exemplar plus ginger brutes. Attack for three and then a chief. Won't be pumping our toolcrafts, unfortunately, but it does give us a nice late game. And then we still have our Blink Moth as a mana sink facing Jeskai. Could be Control. And they might have a Memory Lapse for Chief here, which is gonna set us back a bit, but let's find out. They definitely have a response. So we'll see. Might be Lightning Helix on Chief. Nope, just a Brainstorm. So our opponent must be desperately digging for a Sweeper like Wrath of God or Day of Judgment. And our goal is to try and kill them before they can cast it, which is going to be difficult, admittedly, especially if they find something like a Lightning Helix to buy themselves more time. But maybe we can get them low enough where we can finish them off with a Blink Moth. This is definitely one of those spots where Tempered Steel would be much better than uh, Chief of the Foundry. And Narset is just going to be too slow here. Finds the Wrath of God, but yeah, we were on the play. Opponent didn't have any relevant interaction before turn 4, which is just too slow against an aggro deck like this. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Being on the draw should also help us hit our third land drop for Tempered Steel and Chief. And in the meantime, we get to curve out with Ginger Brutes, Scrap Heap. And uh, we'll probably play the Ornithopter turn 2, so it can get the benefit from Chief and Tempered Steel. Thalia's gonna make our Tempered Steel a bit more expensive. Although we can still play out our creatures, including Ornithopter and Chief. So yeah, hopefully pick up a third land here. And there we go. Not sure what our opponent could be keeping up. Mana Tithe, okay. Well, that's uh, an interesting one, so... Counters a Chief.
Time to start activating Ginger Brood, I suppose. Archon only lets us cast one spell per turn. I guess I'm not allowed to play Ornithopter, but that's fine. I can double activate Ginger Brutes. Thalia doing a pretty good job on defense, admittedly. But as soon as we get to play Tempered Steel, we're going to be in business. I've got a few basic lands to search in case they activate Field of Ruin or Ghost Quarter. So that's not a concern. Although if we draw non-basic, it's going to come into play Tamp because of Archon, so that might prevent us from casting the Tempered Steel. Take two. And we drew the basic, perfect, so that's going to be bank-breaking. Attack with everyone. We're not allowed to play Ornithopter because of Archon. And next turn, the game is going to be pretty much over. Alright, Skyclave can exile Tempered Steel. Also, opponent's still at four, facing double Brutes. And we can always stop deck another Tempered Steel, although do we play around another Mana Tithe is a question. Um, maybe I should. Yeah, sure, we'll just double activate Brutes. That will help us close out the game next turn. And then we even get to play Ornithopter. And then if we draw land, we can play around Mana Tithe. Opponent's gonna try and run us out of basic lands here with Field of Ruin and Ghost Quarter. But it's not gonna work. Lin Vala, Keeper of Silence. Activated abilities cannot be activated. So Ginger Brute can no longer turn unblockable, but luckily we've got a backup Tempered Steel here. Otherwise they might have actually been able to stabilize. And Ornithopter across the finish line, a satisfying way to end the series here. So yeah, Black White Artifact Aggro definitely got some powerful additions in the latest anthology expansions and is a real contender in the format. Can punish some of the slower decks out there and uh, Tempered Steel, as we could see, one of the best cards to leverage the archetype. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.